okay welcome all so now let me open the um, this session okay uh, presentations how this session is going to work before i start actually data stage we will be having regularly live classes after every session you will be getting a, that session recording and as part of this training you will get some assignment and some real time project documentation and uh, project explanation also and we have a dedicated team who is going to take care about the 24 by 7 support uh, technical support for the data stage installation or if you need any recording or any technical issues also and we are offering right now flexibility to attend any classes any number of times and i'll be providing you guidance to prepare your resume and uh, support for your job searching and our admin team will take care about the installation part so they are going to install directly on your mission depends on your mission operating system and configuration the step by step installation is going to take care by them they will share the software to you and they will install on directly on your mission and these recordings you will get a lifetime access whenever you want to download you can download or if any new session uh, happening for example if you want to attend you can attend that session and that session recordings also if you send mail to our team our team will send you latest version recordings also and you will also get a plenty of interview questions and with a detailed explanation of each and every question with uh, how to answer with an experienced guy and i will be able to answer all your questions during our session and if any question is left off uh, while we are in the middle of some logical discussion on some other topic if you ask a um, different question maybe that question we can answer at the end of the session if it is not possible to discuss um, in the middle if not i'll also reply to you your questions which are going to you, you are going to post it through your mail I mean uh, every day one session is done you will okay you will get a mail from our team so you can send your questions through mail or you can ping me in chat window in next session so i'll be i'll be more happy to answer your question at the end of the sessions all completed every question which you are getting will be answered no question will be left off without getting an answer for the duration and let me open my content what i am going to cover as part of this um, ibm infosphere data stay and quality stage training and then i'll go to tool to explain you how we are going to have this tool discussion in our day to day sessions we are covering the tool that is ibm infosphere data stage and quality stage 9.1 and 11.3 features also and we have a people from different backgrounds right some are from oracle some are from different different uh, experiences today i'm going to bring you into data warehousing world how this data stage tool is going to be used there because it's one of the etl tool first week of sessions we will be going to discussing about the fundamentals of data warehouse what is data warehouse what is a data warehouse architecture operational data store data warehouses versus some um, oltp system differences data mods versus data warehouses all the basic fundamentals we are going to discuss when we are covering through the fundamental right i'll go i'll go and discuss about the definition 
how the subject oriented, integrated, volatile database and time variant database which we are going to maintain. And to implement a data warehouse, we are going to see that there are two types of implementations we can see that one is top down data warehouse implementation approach and second one is bottom up data warehousing implementation approach. So as part of our uh, basic, we'll be going through how this top down approach we are going to build and how this bottom up approach we are going to have a process. And then how we are going to load the data into this data mod. The, both the processes will be covering as part of our training. Then we'll go through ETL architecture, that means data warehousing architecture, how we are going to pull the data from heterogeneous sources and putting the data into staging boxes and from there loading the data into data warehouse environment and from there we are going to build the data into the different kind of reporting tools also. Once we are complete with the fundamentals of the data warehouse, I'll also going to cover about the data modeling. As a ETL team, we should also understand about the model. What is this data model? What are the different levels of data modeling we are having? We can say conceptual data model, logical data model, physical data model. Let me just show you simple uh, example for this modeling. When we go through actual sessions, right? about this uh, training, I'm going to use some project documentation to understand how these um, fundamentals we are going to I mean, uh, use in the real project. So you are learning a definition, how it's going to be there okay, in the project, real project, how we are going to implement that one. For example, you are saying that modeling we are going to work on, right? How a model is going to be there? What kind of the schemas we can see in data warehouse? For example, I'm just opening one schema, you can see these kind of different uh, type of tables also there. For example, provider table in one of the insurance company, uh, claims table, profile table, pharmacy table, and member table. Like this, we will be having a different kind of tables built in data where. So these tables are going to divide into dimension tables and fact tables. So I ETL team, you will be creating some process, that means ETL process, to load the data into these kind of the tape. That may be a dimension tables, that may be a fact tape. So we should understand the flow of this model, how conceptual data modeling is developed, how logical data modeling we have, how finally physical data modeling is going to be built, and what way we are going to have the table structure. So that we will be covering as part of the modeling topic. This is all we are going to cover in the first week of session. And next, we will be going through, let me flip into the slide. Next, we will be going through explanation about the, um, how we will be having an architecture of this um, data stage. We are going to call this one as IBM InfoSphere information server architecture. So this is going to maintain four layers. If you observe in this diagram, you can see that client layer, services layer, engine layer, and repository, right? So whenever we go through this all the architecture part, how this information server architecture will be useful to build a data warehouse for a business. See, when you go into data warehouse means, right, it's going to be a database. Simply we can say a data warehouse is a subject-oriented, integrated, time-variant, non-volatile RDBMS. So it's a simply a RDBMS system which maintain this kind of data. So to build that kind of RDBMS system which is going to support those four features, we are using a IBM information server component that is data stage component. That data stage component follows a client server architecture. So here you can see 
client components and you can see engine that engine is representing the server com and as part of this data stage we will also get metadata repository okay, along with the data stage software installation we'll be getting an inbuilt repository with the db2 instance as a database in the background so whatever the components we are storing in the data stage tool those will be storing in background with the db2 repository okay, in um, our day-to-day -day sessions i'll explain how to store the data into the repository what kind of the components will be there in the repository once this architectural tool completed then we'll go to actual tool now let me open the tool i'm just opening a tool here in this mission see this is a data stage um, tool in this data stage tool when you when you got installation of this data stage tool on our missions you will be getting these all the kind of uh, client components these are called client components so when you come into this tool, i mean uh, this tool right you will be having a both developer component that we can say user clients and admin clients also the about two are going to representing about the administration activities okay as part of my training i'm also going to cover both development as well as administration so in administration level we will be having a admin client and web console for ibm information server to create a new user allocating the roles to the users if any user is moving out of this project okay need to delete his credentials from this particular project or unmap credentials. We will also cover about the administration part. And rest of all belongs to developers, especially when you, you are going to work on a data stage developer, you will be using most of time this data stage designer client and director client. Let me give you a high level overview about the, what is this all the clients are going to do. Then I'll go into data stage designer I'll explain what kind of jobs I'm going to cover for your training. So this data stage designer is a client component, which is used to build a data warehouse. That means inside this data stage designer, we are going to develop the data stage jobs. We will be developing different kind of data stage jobs actually. We are going to call, I mean, the executable component which we are creating with using of this data stage tool we'll call with the name job this client will be used to develop the job compile the job run the job and we also can do some kind of modification if you want to do for example one job is already running in production environment now the same job is giving some issues in the production so we want to modify we'll get, come back to development environment there we are going to modify that kind of the activities you want to perform yes we use the this designer client and second one is data state director client. What is this data state director? This director client is the one which is going to useful for viewing the log, scheduling the jobs, and um, message handle management. I mean, for example, what are the messages you are getting in the log window, right? That if you want to handle all these kind of activities, if you want to see kill the job stop the job these kind of the jobs activities if you want to do we'll use this director client component and next one is we have a ibm information server manager what is this ibm information server manager what we'll be having in ibm information server manager ibm information server manager is the one which is going to be useful for doing of deployment code deployment in general, we'll be having different uh, pages right in the project. Development, testing, UAT, production. Like this, we'll be having different phases. What about the code we developed in development environment? We want to move from development to test, or we want to move from development to other environments also. So at the time, to create a package, and that package should be deployed into other environments, we are going to use IBM Information Server Manager Client, which is going to use to deployment.
I'll show you. Okay, give me a minute. And we have import export manager client. This is to import and export the um, metadata from this data stage ETL tool to the um, any other uh, kind of uh, tools. Let me just go back to slides. I'm going to flip between the slides and um, tool. Let me explain. These are all about the. Give me a second. We have a client, right? That's we are going to call as a meta brokers and meta bridges. We are going to create some kind of bridges actually. Though, see here, these meta brokers and bridges are the one which we are going to use to send a data from our data stage tool to some other uh, tool. That means data stage to some other reporting or some other. Uh, for example, I'm, I want to connect from data stage to SAP BIOS or I want to connect from data stage to Siebel. PeopleSoft, or I want to connect from data stage to Hyperion, right? There in the Hyperion, we'll be having some kind of cubes. To pull those cubes in from metadata into data stage, we are going to use these kind of bridges and um, third party workers also we can use to communicate. So that's the purpose of the that tool that is a client info, IBM Import Export Manager. And we are having a IBM InfoSphere fast track client based on, that's one of the client which is used to do based on the business requirement, whatever we are capturing, right? The, the business requirements are going to be converting into technical. Simply, we'll give business requirement, that requirements will be converting into a uh, ETL flow. Okay, wherever we want to convert that, that kind of operations, if you want to perform kind, when you're doing a POC kind of thing, we use this fast track client. And we have one more nothing but IBM Info Sphere Information Server command line. This is the one where we are going to log in and uh, execute some of the commands in data stage. Yes, because data stage softwares are going to be installed on server softwares, especially on Linux or Unix missions. So to connect to those kind of uh, Unix missions, we need some kind of uh, command line interface commands also. So those commands, if you want to execute dead related to data stage admin level or related to data stage jobs, we use this client component. And we have IBM InfoSphere Information Server Console. This is one of the client, which is used to do information analysis and information services direct. Like information analysis means, when you go to this data stage ETL tool, right, we have a information analyzer. That means primary key analysis, foreign key analysis, baseline analysis, these kind of different analysis activities if you want to perform, we use this IBM Information Server Console. That's also one of the client uh, which we are going to have there. And one is uh, there, we are going to use this multi-client manager actually when we want to switch between two different version clients. For example, uh, today we are doing a migration project. Whenever we are doing the migration, from old version to the latest version. For example, we are migrating from 8.1 version of data stage to uh, 9.1. So whenever we are, or 11.3. So whenever we are migrating from 8.1 to 11.3 are these latest versions, I need to switch between both the client components. 8.1 client components I need to log in, and 11.3 uh, components also I need to log in to move the code and everything to compare the code, right? So at that time, if you want to uh, switch between two client components, yes, we are going to use a multi-client manager tool. That's a multi-client manager tool is the one which is going to use to simply uh, switch between the multiple version client components. And we have one more client that we are going to call IBM InfoSphere Information Server Launchpad, which is used to communicate, let me just open, see this is the IBM Info, Information Server Launchpad, which is used to communicate to the different kind of the information server console component. Like we are going to call as a admin console, metadata assistant console, business glossary, metadata workbench, standardization tools in the quality stage, data quality console, okay, operating, there are different kind of consoles if you want to log in and if you want to work. Yes, we are going to use the this InfoSphere Information Server Launchpad, okay. This is the high level uh, meaning of each and every client component, what we are going to do. Now, 
I don't want to explain through slides. I hate to open slides every time I okay, get to explain. Now I'm directly opening the tool. I'm going to explain what I will be covering in the tool. Right? When you open this tool, this is a data state designer window. In this, you are seeing that one in the left hand side that is nothing but repository, and below we are having palette. A repository means it's actually centralized space on our database. That's a, a database we are having is a DB2 instance. And this particular repository is going to maintain all data stage components. It never have any kind of a data actually which we are loading into data warehouse, but ETL process like job, table definitions, quality stage rules. If you build any kind of routines, means C++ code or uh, uh, basic language code or uh, stage types, all these kind of components information you can see in the repository. I'll explain repository more. So wherever you want to build jobs right in data stage, if you want to build a job, we'll be having a some of the stages in data. So we are going to call these anything but a different kind of stages. We can see general, and we can see different uh, data quality, databases, for example, if you open database, right? Database is the one which is used to connect from data stage to different versions of databases like Oracle, Teradata, ODBC. For example, where is the situation, you need to pick data from source is some database, or uh, there is a situation, you need to load in your database data into target warehouse also. So that warehouse is some database, for example, it's Teradata, or my source or legacy system, for example, we are having some data is coming from Oracle, some is coming from DB2, some is coming different other system, right? So to connect from those, all the systems, we are going to use these database stages. And wherever you want to execute some Oracle processor, right, or any kind of store processor, we will be using uh, the store processor stage. We'll also discuss that one, how to use the store processor and how to call store processors in uh, data stage level, which we are writing in database level and we'll be having debug and development process, and wherever you want to process the files, right? Files means like .txt, .csv, .dat, or unstructured data, like uh, we are having unstructured data from latest versions of data stage, that we can say, like Excel sheets, or any kind of the log files, these kind of unstructured data, if you want to process, yes, we'll be using these uh, unstructured, stage also and uh, to do almost all the transformation operations on the data right what are the data we are having almost all transformation if you want to perform yes we'll be using all these transformation stages like um, we have a copy stage to copy the data we have aggregator stage to do the aggregation or automatic operations on the data and we have a slowly changing dimensional stage to do a cd implementation like a cd type 1 type 2 type 3 implementations in the data like surrogate key stage which is used to generate a unique identification in the process. And this is a stage where we are going to do most of transformations actually. We can say, what are the transformations like uh, null handling, reject handling, or um, loop process if you want to build, if you want to write any of the stage variables or uh, constraints, right, or duplicate checks, or any kind of calculations if you want to implement, right, all these you can do with using of the this transformer stage and along with that we can also do some other operation like uh, we can say switch switching the data into multiple outputs and sort operation if you want to sort the data and if you want to do the remove duplicates on the data right where you want to perform simply remove duplicates operation all these kind of different operations if you want to do yes we'll be using these processing stages and next we have a some real-time stages are there, which are used to do real-time operations like XML, web services, all those stuff, and to restructure also. I don't know. I don't want to explain right now itself total process. Let me just open the job. How the jobs we are going to have? I'm just opening the repository. In the repository, we'll be having job, right? Here you can see. I mean, there are different folders are there. As part of training, okay, I'm going to build for each different stage which I want to explain. I'm going to have a job design. I'll explain the job. When you open first data stage, right? When you open data, log into data stage tool, you'll be having different platform. 
those they are going to call as a parallel job sequencer jobs server jobs and in some versions you can see mainframe also so to work on the data stage tool right you will be having parallel jobs is there you will be having server jobs is there you will be having mainframe jobs also you will be having sequencers what is this server jobs mean this is a kind of environment where your jobs are going to execute sequentially and all code whatever you are writing there will be calling only in basic language the next one is parallel we are having a option called parallel job most of our clients nowadays using this parallel version of the data stage simply the parallel version of the data stage we are using there and we will be calling that parallel version of the data stage and parallel processing data into the warehouse also so next one is sequencer what is this sequencer actually sequencer means once we build either server jobs or parallel job we want to build a kind of workflow wherever we require a workflow in data stage uh, process right workflow in the sense a kind of uh, uh, dependencies first which process need to run next which process need to run next which process need to run these kind of dependencies if you want to specify we will be using this sequencer job i'll also explain that one now i'm just logging into this parallel version of data stage version right here you can see, see different different jobs categories for example i just want to open one job as part of my training i'm going to explain simple job designs see this is another job which is reading the data from flat files and which is doing the capturing the data and changes and modifying the data and doing aggregation operations and loading the data into intermediate files okay this way you can see different different job for example we have a other job i'm just opening that one just see this is just copying the data into multiple outputs while copying the data into multiple outputs i'm also doing the switching operation i'm also doing the filtering operation and we'll be having some remote for each stage i can say like for each stage when we are imp implementing a logic right we'll be having different different jobs also for removing the duplicates for sort operation right and we are going to write this kind of annotations while we are building the job so i'm going to explain you you simple job designs and complex job designs with flat files as sources with xml as sources or loading the data into databases for example i just want to take a simple oracle job or else um, one second I think I remove those two jobs. Let me take flat files and let me take one stage where I can do a more operation that's called transformer stage. Let me just open that stage. See, wherever you want to do all the transformations, right? Like uh, different kind of logics, for example, date and time category implementations, null handling checks, all those stuff. We are going to use a stage called transformer. i'm just showing that one even analysis installed but it's showing small warning so here you can see just an example not like a basic uh, discussion we'll go very in detailed uh, discussion on each uh, stage which we required to develop a process in etl for example here i wrote some of the stage variables like uh, year year date calculations okay count calculations and delimiter calculations setting the null values actually and a uh, date from julian day conversions and similar to that in a derivation level derivation level means in a individual column level let me just show you right here you can see there are different kind of logic so as part of my training i'm going to explain these kind of the logics how to build See, only knowing the stages are is a very simple definition is very simple actually but how to really use that particular stage in a project is important okay when we know that uh, i mean when we have that much capability we can easily okay uh, i mean um, learn each thing and we can easily work on a or real environment when you are working in a so you can see here right for example field operations and um, string conversions Null handling, conversion functions, 
okay input rows output rows conversions all these kind of different logics actually so these kind of different logics how to give a input columns and how to add our own um, columns actually how to add our own uh, columns also to the data that also we are going to cover as part of our training this is a way we are going to build the jobs and development of data stage and then we'll also go to sequencer environment how to build a sequencer jobs let me just open the sequence see this is one example see sequence means assume that we are a team of five people right each one develop their own jobs after developing the own job they, that need to be put in a sequence which job need to be run first for example we all are working for a different subject areas in a project for example we are working for a banking domain somebody is working on involved part subject area somebody is working on a arrangement subject area somebody is working on product somebody is working on location so finally we should all integrate these all the jobs right once uh, involved part is completed we should go to the I main that data should be used in the arrangement right that kind of dependencies we should set up or sometimes the same process should run multiple iterations got my point for example there is a job we have that job should run every day 10 times so that kind of a job build we are going to put in a loop process actually we are going to build one loop in that loop we'll put the job and how many number of iterations you want run that for example based on the file count based on the other delimiters file right whatever we are having we want to split these kind of the loops when we want to build or we want to check the reject counts also for example you are processing some data uh, from source our source upstream system to data warehouse but we identified some of the duplicate records or we identify some of the bad data right when we identify some bad data we should simply check whether there are any bad records if there are any bad records we want to terminate our process simply we can say terminate the jobs also so these kind of terminations if you want to build okay or if you want to check the counts or if you want to execute the counts or right that we can use and if you want to pass the variables at run time for example wherever you want to pass the variables at run time we use this um, user variable activity user variable activity is the one where you can see some other variables for example my oracle username password host name table name date all these i am passing right now as an example of variables so wherever you want to pass a variables and if you are building a process right you are waiting for some file if the file arrived then only job need to run if the file did not arrive today from our upstream system job should still wait so for doing of that kind of activities in the sequences we'll be having wait for file activities like this okay we are having multiple process actually to build this workflow yes we will be also covering this all in my sequence explanation so okay, how to do or for example you ran the sequence assume that this is having almost 10 15 jobs i'm going to build i'm not showing you okay old batch sequences I, for every batch i'm going to build the jobs and at the end of the session i'm going to share the along with the recordings i'm going to share the the code whatever i build in my system to everyone so simply you can import that code into your mission you can also practice okay yep does it answer your question abhijit yep at the end of every session yep you will also get the code whatever we are building in the practice for my from my mission you can import that into your mission and you can use that one as a reference while you are practicing along with the recording and once we are done with the this data stage job development and uh, uh, basic uh, process and data stage director and latest version of new options how we are having transformation stage yes it is slowly changing the dimension table implementation and how to do the resource estimation performance analysis and we'll also go and discuss about data state director client component and after that we'll go for the administration also so when you go to this data state tool right let me open i'm just closing the this data state tool i mean these are all actually or let me minimize see we have administrator clam components of two admin and web console let me open web console so what is this web console mean this is we are going to call as the ibm information server uh, console this ibm information server console is the one 
where we are going to create a new users okay, as part of our training we'll also discuss about the um, this one let me just take the password and usernames from this one okay same way once you got installation completed on your mission you will get um you can the passwords from admin team I'm just using that okay give me a moment please I logged into this particular information server. I can say information server client. Here you can do different activities like um, administration, glossary, business glossary, information services catalog, and reporting. So mainly we are going to work. I mean, whoever is working as admin team, right? They are going to work in the administration part. In the administration, there are different kind of the administration activities they are going to do, like domain management, session management. Okay users and groups creation, log management, schedule management. Here in the users and groups creation, right, here the, this is a place where any new user joined in our project, okay, I mean team, uh, we can say into our company, okay, if they want to access to this data stage, admins will come into this place and they are going to create a new user here. Once they created the new user, that user will be allocated to any specific project in the desktop admin client. When they go for the desktop admin client, right? They they are going to allocate this particular user to specific project. So that way, we are going to use this one and groups creation. Yes, as part of my training, I am also going to cover complete administration part also. Rakesh, yes. Okay, not only development, yes, we will cover both data stage development part and admin part also. And once the I mean development and admin part completed, yes, we'll also go to in data stage. If you remember, right? Okay, when I open this palette, I can see some of the data quality also. That means I can see quality stage stays also we are having. What is this quality stage stages? What we are having in this quality stage stages? Means we are having a data quality check. See, by using our ETL tool, right? That is data stage. You are extracting the data. You are transforming the data. You are loading the data. But you are just joining and you are removing the duplicates or you are identifying the highest values or lowest values or you are performing the null handlings or reject handlings only. There is no direct property in data stage itself, data stage properties itself to check the quality of the data. Whatever the data we received from upstream system, for example, right? I am receiving the policies data, members data. I am receiving the customers data. I am receiving the agents data like so when I have that data from source system, I want to verify member address is correct or not. Member name standards, I mean, member name also following the standards or not. Telephone number following the standard or not. These kind of the validations if you want to do in data stage tool, along in the data stage tool itself, we have a additional component is in, we are getting as part of this data stage tool. It's from version 8.1 onwards that we are going to call as a quality stage. Let me give a quick introduction about this quality stage, then I'll come back to this uh, tool, I'll explain, okay? Okay, these are the slides which I am going to share, which we are going to use for the week wise. I'm, I'm going to share these all the slides as part of my training when I'm going to use. Let me just um, share the quality stage one. I want to explain a little bit of quality because as part of my training, I'm going to cover about quality stage also. How to build a quality and what kind of rules we are going to implement in the quality stage. Okay. Bear me a moment. Slide is taking a little bit time to open. Yeah. See, what are the different challenges we are going to have on the data generally? There are different challenges we are going to face on the data when we receive the data from 
or business systems like source upstream systems right those are nothing but the we'll be receiving inconsistent data inconsistent standards inconsistent format or values also and we'll be having a missing data and default values and uh, we are having a spelling errors and data in wrong fields and sometimes we will be getting the data with uh, two or three fields are merged as a single field that we are going to call as a buried information and we will be having a data myopia what is this myopia in a sense there is no common key format in the data for example you are receiving employee ids right when all employees are working in a particular company their employee id format should be same for example one employee id is starting with a b c d 1 2 3 4 second employee is starting with 1 2 3 4 a b c d or third employee is starting with hash 1 2 3 4 a b c that means that is not following the standards so we are expecting the data in standards in a business so if you receive the data from the source system inconsistent standards so we should correct that one right that's uh, checking for the myopia and data anomalies like duplicate value c just an example there are different kind of the formats of data same customer name we received from the um, uh, source a and source b and source c source a we are receiving with, uh, for example take an example of one name tom and mary roberts and source b the same customer name is coming in different way and source three the same name is coming in different way right so these kind of heterogeneous formats data when we receive while we are loading this data into data warehouse system we should convert these all heterogeneous formats data into homogeneous and then we are going to load into data warehouse table because you are getting the data from legacy systems but that legacy systems data we should convert into a homogeneous format then start loading into data warehouse table so because you are having one table that table will be used by our reporting teams to generate the reports to business so whenever they are generating the reports to the business they need a data in a consolidated format and the, they need a data in a structured format they don't need a legacy formats data so we should convert right to convert that one yes we sh first we should check whether this data is a valid data or not if this is a valid data convert it if this is not a valid data reject that one and uh, we can discuss with the business right that kind of validations we should do before we are processing into warehouse that's play that's the way we have a quality stage even if you see in market right we are having a dies in cop to cop okay or um, when you go into the hindi or this kind of job portal you can find that okay quality stage separate requirement also so better to have quality stage knowledge along with the data stage so how to identify this one what kind of the data quality challenges we are having and how to do this quality phases right and in the quality stage also the main components which we are going to have in the mm, tool is investigation standardization matching and uh, survivorship uh, i don't want to use the slides okay to explain let me jump directly into tool here you can see those all right you can see let me close these all let me open um, data stage jobs okay see these are the data quality stages you can see here investigate standardize data rules mns mns full form is multinational standardization stage which is used to check the or which is used to standardize the data from multiple countries at a time instead of okay uh, standardizing one by one country if you want to check address at a time for the multiple countries we will be using this mns stage that's called multinational standardization stage and we are having a match frequency and we'll be having two source match and uh, one source match and survival stage right to, to identify the best breed of records and standardization is the very important stage once we got the data from source right we are checking yes is it good data or bad data once we identified yes is a good data then make that data into standard format that's important so we are trying to make the data into standard format right while we want to do the making the data into standard format 
we should apply some of the built-in rules and we should apply some of the user-defined rules. Kind of uh, when you are working on a developer on quality stage, you are going to build your own rules with support for the data processing and then we are loading into the target. So these kind of the transformation operations whenever you want to build, right? Those, uh, I mean, we are going to use the these kind of stages actually. Let me just open some sample jobs for that. I don't want to explain how the logics are going to be there inside, but see these many jobs I built for my previous classes to explain. Let me just open the standardization stage for example. See, this is the standardization stage for example, okay. I'm just opening the standardization stage in the quality stage to change or how to check the standardization format. See, what I'm checking here in this case is US name format, US address format, US area format, US um, date format, no, sorry, validation date format. That validation date means, okay, whenever you give a birth date or whenever you give a policy expired, any, any kind of date, right? So we should validate the date, the date format is looks good or not. So those kind of the validations whenever we want to perform, yes, we have a uh, date format check conditions also there that we are going to call as a validation date. So actually, in quality stage, whenever we want to apply the rules, right, there are different kind of the standardization process we are going to have. Like um, domain rules and non-domain rules. What this domain rules means? Name, address, area. These three we are going to call as a domain rules. And non-domain means like phone number, email ID, taxation ID, these kind of the validations if you want to do on the data, we are going to call that one as a non-domain rules. So we will be identifying the what domain rules we should apply and like taxation IDs, email IDs, or dates, phone numbers, right? How to implement. If you want to write a rule or if you want to see existing rules, just click on the new rule here and open the rule set window. It will go to connect to our repository, right? In the repository, you can open the standardization rules. In the standardization rules of our quality stage, yes, we'll be having a different country rules, right? You can see Australia, Canada, China, France, Germany, Italy, Japan. These are the different kind of the rules we are having actually. So, as part of our training, how to use these built-in rules? And in companies when you are working on a project, right, we also need to get some of the additional rules. So, our, I mean, a client is going to purchase those rules from IBM. And then IBM is going to import in your uh, uh, repository, okay, some extra rules also, which are additional requirement for that one. So when we go to those rules, right, what are the rules we are having there? Those rules, how to build, sometimes we are going to use built-in rules. Sometimes, yes, we are going to create our own rules also. So whenever we are building our own rules, especially, let me just show you. For example, I have in the US, these are the different rules. I'm just opening new rule, sorry, name rule. Right click here. I'm just showing you the rule how it will be there. Okay. I mean, just to explain how in detail I'm going to explain. See, here you can see different kind of the rule sets, exceptions, and lookup tables. For example, you have a give a moment. Sorry, not this one. Still opening. See, these are the different names as per existing rule is taken as a first name. For example, there was some name, that name is not exist in this list. Then what we need to do? We should copy this rule and add what are the names you want to add to that, uh, that uh, rule window and save. That means you are going to create your own rules also. Not only this rule, okay, patterns, everything you are going to create in the quality stage. So as part of our training, how to build these kind of quality stage jobs, Right, how to write our own rules also, and how to call the jobs. Just I'm can sorry. I'm just canceling. See, this is the standardization job, for example, and let me open. Um, oh, still, uh, the standardization rules are opening. Give me a moment. 
So as part of our training, right, we'll be covering about the, um, this quality stay process. Okay, uh, what is this investigation stage? What is this standardization stage in the quality? And what is this match process? How to do the survival process? Okay, how to do this data quality uh, life cycle implementation? And in recent days, when in quality stage, we have AVA stages there. That's called address verification interface stage, actually. That you are not able to see in our uh, systems. Okay, I even that I actually um, a plugin need to buy from IBM. Uh, the software which we are using, we don't have that plugin. We did not, um, I mean, purchase that that plugin from IBM, so we don't have that one. But in companies, right? In case if you are working on quality stage in your project, yes, you can see that AVA plugin also. But I worked on that plugin. I'll explain. Uh, I have extensive experience on that that plugin, so I can explain how to use that AVI plugin, how to call that AVI plugin and uh, replace the AVI plugin and everything also. I'll explain. Let me just show you. See, this is the for match process, and this is for reference match in the quality stage. Okay, how to do the reference match operation? Okay, household match operation. Or okay, see, let me just open. See, this is again a household match operation for that. Individual household, how to implement and business dependencies, creating of SK reports, right? How to create the reports actually. And once we build these kind of the jobs actually in data state quality state standardization process, and how to put this, all the jobs in sequence. Again, these quality state jobs, whatever we build also, we are going to put in sequence. See, first it's going to do investigation, then standardization, then reference match, then preference match preparation, survival ship, household match, finally populate the data into the table actually. So this is the overview actually we are going to have these kind of the um, overviews, how to build and how to load the data into this um, quality stage, what kind of data quality checks we are going to implement. Yes, I'll also going to cover that one. And uh, information server admin. Then finally, we are also going to cover about one other project. So entire first five weeks will be covering about the tool that is data stage, data warehousing fundamentals and quality stage admin part. And last week of our training, we are going to focus completely on project. I'll take one project documentation. I'll explain how these projects are going to be used and executed. Like we will start with the how we are going to have a BRDs, business requirement documents, kind of flow, how we are going to have a subject area phase flow, HLDs and LLDs creation, project flow designs, right? How we are be having a project flows and a complex job discussions, unit testing, how to do the unit testing, test case preparations, system accident testing, regression testing, end to end testing, how to do. I'll also explain about deployment process. I told you, right? By using this um, client, let me just open. See, IBM Information Server Manager. I'll show you how to do. Okay, how to do this uh, information? Server. Sorry, I think um, some Java error is coming. No problem, we can fix it. Maybe I created a shortcut for that. Okay. So, how to use the this information server uh, manager client for importing and exporting of a uh, code from one version to other version, right? That also we are going to cover as part of our training and the creation of job design document and testing documents. And I'll be covering, I mean, um, you, how to write, a, how to build Unix scripts. See, who want to work on any of the ETL tools, they should have knowledge on ETL along with the databases, along with that some part of Unix also. You should have either basic commands knowledge. If you are having some scripting knowledge, yes, it'll be an added advantage. So I'm going to discuss about the um, scripting and how to do this uh, scheduling process and fixing the problems and incident, how to work on in the production support activities. So these are all the topics we will be covering as part of our project discussion. And we will be sharing you plenty of material which is going to cover about the fundamentals of data stage and data warehousing tool. 
let me just open that coming to the material what are the material i'm going to share is data molding documentation there are plenty of molding doc examples see these are the molding examples okay for few projects and i'll be sharing you class ppts which i'm going to use the device ppts see each day we are going to use different different ppts right i made into different 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 weeks so i'm going to share those other ppts to you guys and some of the other ppts which we are going to use to discuss some um, some advanced topics right partition techniques configurations active and passive process metadata process parallelism process these kind of the um, other topics i can say okay which is supporting for data stage uh, functionality those to discuss we are going to use routine sequencers okay all these ppts i'll be sharing that one and the project related materials okay, which is supporting for project which you you, you can use for uh, understanding of the project hlds project architectures right how to understand the project and what kind of the project you are going to use see for example this is one of the project architecture right which is explaining about the project technical specs actually project uh, technical uh, flow how we are going to have a technical flow of the project right the technical flows also i'm going to discuss like end to end logical flows if you see in this case we have a different kind of the sources and from there we are loading the data into warehouse from there we are creating different kind of marts from there we are loading the data into report into that is cognos and to do this kind of entire process we are using third party scheduling tool called control m this is the place where we are using data stage we are receiving the data from heterogeneous uh, legacy formats like some data is coming from mq some data is coming from uh, current direct process some data is coming from scp process some data is coming through xml right how to handle all these um, data flow i'll i'll be covering as part of our training that also and project functional spec which is explaining our functional process and i'm also going to give you a technical specification document how we are going to develop a data stage jobs based on these kind of tech specs so when you are working on a project right you will be having different kind of technical specs for example so those kind of technical specs you should be able to understand so how to use these kind of technical specs actually how to process those technical specs actually we'll also discuss and we'll also share to you and data stage tool both server jobs and parallel jobs in 8.7 9.1 all these kind of version guides and device ppts fundamentals and we'll also go through how a testing is going to done by our testing teams we'll be having a different kind of uh, testing teams actually after we build a data uh, in the etl process right how to do this testing actually and the quality stage and information analyzer which explains about the quality process in the tool how to check the data quality what kind of quality stage, some rules how to build so these are the actually one which we require to build the projects actually so these are the uh, kind of materials i'm going to share to understand the quality stage completely and information analyzer also and some teradata material and some unix script which are going to use to uh, i mean understand the script process and uh, how to archive the files how to launch the jobs for example if you want to remove the header and tiler how to remove the xml tag names from the given input file right if you, uh, one file is coming from source from that particular file we want to do xml tag removal so how can we do this xml tag removal from the file right all these things we are going to discuss as part of our uh, training and same material also we will be sharing and uh, after completion of entire course i'm going to take some separate sessions which is going to discuss about um, performance tuning how to build a performance uh, on your jobs once development completed by any developer yes we need a performance tuning also so that also will be covering through our sessions and to practice this entire tool right you need some sample data i'm going to share sample data for practice also okay this is a one which we are going to cover as part of our training in high level anyone having any questions and uh, coming to installation and everything will be taken care of by my admin team so they will share the installation related stuff and everything to you and materials and everything everything they are going to share devan itself 
and on the day one itself once you enroll for the session you will be getting a pre-recorded uh, previous batch sessions so you can go to that one